Hey, Duran. Hey. Hey, uh, thanks for coming down. Sure. My name's Alexis. Hey, Jordan. Hey, good hey. to meet you. Hey, this is James. Hey. We're just know. completely independent, just to do whatever I think. Can we ask you a couple questions? Go ahead. Okay, so, um, uh, are you familiar with the uh, the, the voter disenfranchisement that occurred in the 2016 primary here in Brooklyn? Am I familiar? I was the only one covering it at first. Okay. Yeah, I was at the uh, courthouse the day they uh, challenged the uh, Board of Elections. Right, right. Uh, to my understanding, I don't think the Board of Elections has has made any official statements about how they plan on rectifying this this issue. Yeah, de Blasio put out a BS, you know, we're going to hire more people to do something, and yeah, it was kind of swept up that one. So, so you're correct. So do you think it's going to occur again next primary? I think it's bigger than Brooklyn. I think, I said this when Bernie announced, I think uh, he needs an army of volunteers or election integrity people to be, uh, uh, what's the opposite of, uh, proactive, not reactive. So I think he needs to look at every single state registration deadlines, uh, mailers that are going out. And, you know, we had problems just in California, New York, with mailers going out with this, that was deceptive. I think he needs to be seeing who are on these Board of Elections, from Brooklyn to elsewhere, to see what are their ties to the Democratic Party and candidates. And he needs more than the normal, frankly, you know, nice senior citizen poll watcher. He's going to need people paid from his campaign looking at all of these right places right. because, yeah, I mean, efforts are already underway. The DNC might not put it in writing this time, but they're certainly going to try their best to regulate it. Uh, uh, thanks. And then on that topic as well, uh, so to, to my knowledge, no candidate, including Bernie, has publicly said you know, anything you're, about you're the fact with that power, right? we have a, a polling system that is largely run by computers. Yes. And therefore, there is the motive and the means to to uh, steal votes. Tim Canova talked about that quite a bit. Right. Uh, what do you think about the fact that Bernie is not s discussing that? You know, I think based on talking to some people uh, from his campaign in 2016, he, he then didn't want to focus on it because he felt the corporate outlets would paint him as a sore loser. And, you know, it's like, all right, if this happens in New York, if I kick and scream about it, well, I got Pennsylvania next week. So I think that was his uh, thought process. But I think he does need to talk about it, not after it happens, but before, uh -huh. and do the things that we're talking about. Because you cannot, I mean, Greg Palast, who's a great journalist, I've interviewed him, says, I mean, they can't steal all of the elections all the time, but they certainly could try. Yeah. So like, to kind of counteract for the, the rigging that they're gonna try to do, he would have to win like 55 to 60% every time. So I think he's going to have to, I don't think he wants to talk about it until it's a problem. I think he needs to talk about it before it's a problem because it's not just the machines. I mean, it's the closing down polling stations. They did that in 2016 in conveniently states where Hillary Clinton's friends were governors. Uh, so they were closing down the polling stations, they were sending out deceptive mailers, uh, they were running out of ballots, and all these things that amount to voter suppression and election fraud. So I challenge Bernie to talk about it. I think he should. Uh, Tulsi nice. Gabbard too. But right now she just needs to get covered. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, thanks. And then I guess uh, the last question would be about the DNC fraud loss. Um, so... Yeah, I did a video a couple weeks ago because oh. they're appealing it. Uh, I know uh, Jared Beck who doesn't particularly like me for whatever reason, but uh, he thinks I didn't cover it enough. But yeah, I know that they appealed it and there was a development a few ah, weeks ago, right, so I, I, I did a video on it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I guess, yeah, uh, again, along the same lines, uh, basically the Democratic Party admitted in open court that they rigged the primary and favored Hillary Clinton. Not only that they rigged it, but they have the right to rig it, that they can go right. in a back room with cigars and do right. whatever the hell they want. Exactly. So I guess uh, why, you know, kind of makes you question, well, what's, why wouldn't we have every expectation that that's going to happen again? And they probably haven't already perhaps even selected their candidate. And this is all another dog and pony show. I don't, I don't think it's about, I already know they are. It's not a question of expectations, it's uh -huh. like they are. <laughs> right. uh, frankly, I think that the Democratic Party establishment's chosen candidate is Kamala Harris. Uh, if Joe Biden gets in, that could change, but I think they want to run Kamala Harris for several reasons. Number one, she's a woman. Number two, she's black. I'm not against either of those things, but that 
for the Democratic Party, you see it on social media already, they put a protective shield over someone because anything you say on policy amounts to racism and sexism. She's younger. And, you know, she is put together like they branded Obama, like they branded a lot of people, uh, as kind of like for the people and these kinds of things. So I think that's their chosen candidate. Uh, you're starting to see, and I'm going to do more reporting on this, she's doing fundraisers with like a murderer's row of Hillary Clinton's donors from her 2016 campaign. So what you say about dog and pony show, I see what you're saying. Uh, I'm generally a very cynical person. Uh, why I think it slightly could be different this time is I think the more establishment voter uh, that voted for Hillary Clinton see Trump now. And I think they're going to look more at not who they love, but who do they think can defeat Trump. And I think the polls are going to show Bernie Sanders can defeat Trump. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be shenanigans, but I don't think it would be, I don't think it will be as prevalent this time because frankly, the polls and the momentum is so much more with Bernie this time than it was in 2016. When he launched in 2016, he did it like outside the Senate in a grassy pocket. Uh, and it was, he barely had a campaign, he barely had an infrastructure. But I don't think it's a dog and pony show, but I think his volunteers, his actual paid staff, need to be proactive. I haven't heard him talk about uh, election issues. I haven't heard him talk about ballot issues. I haven't heard him talk about um, polling stations. I haven't heard him talk about um, you know, making these voter registration deadlines less repressive. I mean, in New York, you got to change registration like 20 years before the primary. It's absurd. Right. Six months, right, yeah, literally. Right, yeah. And that's meant to suppress the vote. So he should be talking about these things. But I don't think it's, I, I wouldn't say it's as dire as a dog and pony show, but I do think, again, we cannot be reactive. Right. He should be talking about these things, and his campaign should be talking about these things. Uh, so what do you think, what would stop them from anointing Kamala Harris just like they anointed Hillary Clinton? I think that the difference this time is Hillary Clinton had 20, 30 years of buying off local state officials. So people were really scared. Uh, to go against Hillary Clinton. I mean, I was in New Hampshire, South Carolina, yep, like these local officials, trust me, a lot of them didn't like Hillary Clinton. But at that time, it was political suicide. Kamala Harris doesn't have that kind of infrastructure. She does have top donors, but she doesn't have that loyalty. And frankly, I think a lot of these local people uh, in the state that Bernie needs to win um, actually are seeing, oh, wait, like it's not really suicidal now. There's no Clinton. And wow, like this is what all the polls, people, Politicians have no courage, so they're just going by the polls. Well, the polls now say, no, this isn't radical. So it would actually be more suicidal for them to keep going out and saying they're against it. Joe Biden does, because what does Joe Biden care? He's a plutocrat and he's an elitist and he'll go off in the sunset. But I don't think they're going to be able to anoint Joe as easy. I think what's different this time, the corporate media, I'm talking about New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, all of them. Uh, they're working together now. It's almost like they get into a room on a Monday on a conference call and they just assign, you got Monday, you got Tuesday, and it's one big corporate hit job on Bernie. Now, Bernie should be challenged on some things, but uh, there's a lot more propaganda out there against Bernie than there was in 2016. I mean, all, I mean, you're hearing a narrative, well, you know, he brought all these other politicians over to the left, so why doesn't he hand, why, why doesn't he hand off the baton? Well, would Michael Jordan hand off the baton to younger Polit? No. Yeah. So uh, I think um, they're going to try to anoint Kamala or Beto if he gets in. I think he's going to get in. But I think what's different this time is, I mean, the army has grown. Uh -huh. There are millions more 18-year-olds, black, white, Latino, indigenous, handicapped, LGBT, you name it. And they want Bernie. They don't want a knockoff version. So I think that's what's different. Thanks. And then I guess I'll just cut, you're, you're making me think of a couple more questions. Sure. Uh, so regarding Kamala Harris, uh, I know that uh, there's this big... Uh, or, or Who, by the way, is doing a fundraiser March 20th that I'm looking into because one of the donors there uh, might be linked to the Malaysia uh, embezzlement. Oh, really? Scam. One MDB? Really? Yeah. His, uh, uh, his, the organization he co-founded, wow. Shomit, I, I don't know his last name, Shomit something, uh -huh. uh, was tied to the 1MDB. Wow. Uh, since you were talking about Trump, I'm just curious, uh, do you, how do you feel about Trump? Is there any, uh, you know, in, in terms of criminal justice reform, Trump did uh, pass a, a pretty, a landmark bill, the First Step Act. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, I mean, you have to credit it when he, when he does good. I was happy also when for five minutes he was going to withdraw troops from Syria, but that went away real quick. Um, listen, I think Trump accidentally sometimes does things right. I wouldn't give him so much credit that he's sitting there at night like, how do I help those you know wrongfully imprisoned people? Uh, I think um, Trump has political people around him uh, that say, you know, you got X amount in the 2016 election of black voters, so maybe we could uptick it. You know, even by five points, that might swing it. So so I wouldn't give him righteous, I mean, this is a man on the record for many years that's been racist and housing discrimination. With that said, you know, to me, Trump, and I'm a white guy, so I'm saying it as a white guy, I understand why black people and brown people and, and, and immigrants are a lot more worried about Trump than I would be. But to me, Trump, um, truth is Bernie is the right candidate to face him because it was never, it was, Hillary Clinton couldn't make the case against him that Donald Trump is a spoiled guy with a silver spoon in his mouth because she was a spoiled person with a silver spoon in her mouth. And I don't say that because she's a woman. I say that because she hasn't driven a car in 25 years and she's one of the plutocrats, you know? So I think with Donald Trump, has he done some good things? Uh, the talk about getting us out of these wars is good, but we're still bombing eight countries. He's increased Obama's drone war double. Uh, we're still droning half the world, which only creates more terrorism. So uh, I can't say that many good things about him. I think that Donald Trump's worst nightmare, and I don't say this as somebody who likes Bernie Sanders, is Bernie Sanders, because the only way to defeat Donald Trump is to have a polar opposite contrast. And Kamala Harris is not a contrast. Uh, Kamala Harris, on the policy, she might be speaking progressively, but once people look at the, at the fine print, She's not that big of a uh, difference. But on Trump, the one thing I will say about Trump that I like, uh, I think that Trump, uh, in his talk, has uh, exposed a lot of things as far as, you know, why are we paying for all these other countries' defense? Why are we paying uh, to be in all these wars? But talk is talk. He's not backing us out of Afghanistan. He's not back backing us out of Syria. He's not backing us out of anywhere because he's a showman. He doesn't believe anything. Trump's ideology is Trump. So, and I like that Bernie's talking about the silver spoon in his mouth because that's how you're going to defeat him by basically shrinking him down to what he really is. Okay, Jordan, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the yeah, time to talk to us.